from Copper Kettle Farms. I'm Crystal. And I'm Donald. <laughs> and we are going to show you our Mary Heirloom Seed Order that we just got. Um, this was recommended to us by Dee from Naturally MC because they're having this 99 cent sale thing. So we kind of went crazy with it. And uh, what do you what? Are you doing? what? I was the hand. Oh, he's the hander. Sorry. Well, before we open that, we did get, went ahead and got a couple other seeds, too, because um, there's any place we were at that had them. Um, we, we, got, we were getting soil, some potting soil. Yeah. And the guy had some seeds left yes. from last year's. So they buy one, get one free because they were last year's seeds. But I wanted to try some sweet basil or sacred basil because uh, Jess from Roots of Refuge talks about how this is one of her favorite things to smell. Mine is sweet basil in the garden, and yours is tomatoes. To smell, and but basil-wise, it's Thai basil. Yeah. Oh, it smells so awesome. And I've been told that this smells quite different, so we're going to try it out. We got some sweet basil, because i got to have more sweet basil. And then, because it was buy one, get one free, Donald wanted these painted lady sweet peas. Look how pretty they are. Where's the camera? But they're um, And then, because it was, we had to get another one free, we got some of the sweet chocolate peppers, which we like to grow. So let's see what we got from uh, Mary Heirloom Seeds. Our first one, we got some sage. I don't know if it's aromatic or the eating sage, but we're going to go ahead either way because we love both. So I'm excited about that one. Little gem lettuce. We eat a lot of lettuces, especially during the summer. A nice, fresh, cold salad in the summer is one of my favorite things. Burgundy okra. We grow okra. I've never actually cooked it yet. I'm going to this year, thanks to Samson, Samson Farms. But we seed saved a lot of our own regular green okra, so we're going to try some of this burgundy just for the color and see if there's a taste difference. Now, we did grow one stalk eight feet tall. You're proud of that stalk, aren't so, you? I'm just saying. We got some yellow scallop squash. Um, these are like, my dad calls these Peter Pan squash. I don't know if that's the official name for them or not, but it's usually he gets the white kind. So we got this yellow kind just to kind of surprise dad and see if he likes it. Lemon Bee Balm, which is a mm. pollinator attractor, but it also masks. Yeah, does any, anything that has a lemon scent will mask uh, your plants from predator insects, or not predator insects, bad insects. Bad the the kind of pests so if you even if you you don't it doesn't have to be lemon bee balm it can be literally anything the lemon, lemon mint scented. lemon verbena lemon verbena lemon, lemon, lemon geranium grass. um i also learned that bee balm is a member of the mint family so it does spread like mint just so you know next is jarradale pumpkin I think, I want to say this is the blue pumpkins, but I'm not sure. I love squash and pumpkins, so I'm always willing to buy, grow any kind of squash and pumpkin just to see what it's like. Medium red clover. I think we got this for a cover crop for the, over by where the hula culture bed is going to be, but even in general, I think any kind of cover crop here with how crappy our soil is is going to help, so... Lemon Queen Sunflower. Uh, sunflowers we like to grow because we can feed it to our chickens. So it's a good food source for chickens. We're going to line a lot of our fedge in front of the house with sunflowers to help block traffic, to help um, create... I think we're going to do a lot of the perennial and annual sunflowers. So the, the mm -hmm. sun chokes for the perennial and then all these other kinds of sunflowers with the annual just to create a barrier that is also a food source for the homestead. And to beautify it. And because they're beautiful. Beautiful. Sweet banana peppers, my favorite pepper. Because, I don't know, I like the flavor of most peppers, but I don't like the texture. But these pickled... What are you looking at me like that for? Well, I was, I was, I was, I'm, I'm looking at the camera, I'm not looking at you. I feel the gaze through the lens. So I'm looking at them going, yeah, what's really weird is she loves these. Love these. Can't stand bell peppers. I like the flavor. And if they're cut up tiny, I don't know, just something about biting into them is just... If they're cut up enough to where I don't know I'm eating them, yeah, we're good. I like the flavor. Well, that's how Not parents have children to eat vegetables. 
You know, I would totally eat vegetables and brownies. That's how they got them to eat? Yeah. My kids, if I ever have kids, I'm going to have some veggie brownies. Next on the list, Thomas Laxton P. No idea what this looks like. I don't remember. But we, I think at one point we just went click happy. Well, and dad likes peas, yeah. so growing peas for dad. You were like, yeah, sure. Uh, this is one that was given to us for free for our order, and that's La Sinatra Kale, which we grew last year. It did really well. We actually grow kale very well, but we don't eat a lot of kale. I don't like a lot of kale. But my goal this year, I've eaten it where I've liked it, but I know it was cooked with like bacon, is to find ways that I can enjoy kale. That's how you eat it, with bacon. But I want to find as many ways as possible to like all of our foods. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If nothing else, I have a lot of friends that love kale. We'll give it as gifts. Red burgundy onion. We do a lot of onion here. So I'm excited about as any onion and every onion. Ruby red Swiss chard. We didn't grow any chard last year and we really missed it because the year prior we grew a lot of it. And not only was it just in abundance, like you can chop and drop and it grows right back in a week. Um, I'm not chop and drop it. Yeah, we, we chop and eat it. But we didn't grow any last year. And I, I forget what, I think we just ran out of time or forgot to grow it. And we really missed it. So we're going to up our chard game this year. Are you trying to sneak like you're handing me drugs or something? No, not at all. Nasturtium Dwarf Jewel. Edible. They're beautiful. And they're, what do you call them, trapper? They're a trap crop. Trap crop. So if you plant them next to squashes, if you have squash beetles, that's an issue. You can plant them next to squashes, they'll attract the squash beetles, and you can just pull that whole crop. Yeah. And toss it. And then you shouldn't have squash beetles. You've done that. They're pretty. It's pretty successful. We'll get squash beetles every now and then, and they'll be they'll be all over the nasturtiums. So. Yeah. Um, black beauty zucchini. Your standard, pretty much your standard zucchini. Who loves zucchini? I use it a lot in. We have one of those noodle cutters, so I'll make noodles out of them. I'll make lasagna with zucchini strips instead of noodles. So we use it for pretty much everything. Jalapeno peppers, kind of self-explanatory. Are they? Yeah, everybody loves jalapenos. Dill ducat. So some dill. One, another one of my favorite herbs to grow. I'll tell you what is a good dill recipe, and I'll make a video about this. Mixing it with sweet potato fries is really good. Or Georgia green collard. So we're in 6B, so this is something we're actually going to plant today. Um, a lot of our greens, cabbages, um, broccoli, and, and things like that, brassicas, we're going to plant today in 6B. But... We're going to grow some collards. Collards. Giant of Italy parsley. Parsley is actually very important for the garden because parsley is a good food source for monarch caterpillars, not the butterfly. And a lot of people think that if you get a, like something that's good for a monarch butterfly that the caterpillar can eat it too, but they actually have completely separate food sources. So this is one for the monarch butterfly. That's why you'll see those striped. The caterpillar. The caterpillar. You'll see the striped caterpillar on the uh, eating your leaves. The deer like it too, but I'm trying to avoid feeding it to the deer. Long Island Brussels sprouts. I have not yet successfully grown any Brussels sprouts. For some reason, they get ate up. So I'm hoping this year is my year. We, I intend, I, I intend to go extreme mother on all of my brassicas this year because we have a bad cabbage worm problem. And just well, poop house all of them. Hopefully this year we don't because we planted so many so much thyme. Thyme is supposed to be a repellent of the cabbage worm, and I'm, we're trying we're trying to do it to where it's beneficial insects, predator insects, and companion planting to control and and soil microorganisms to control the pest problem without using pesticides. Yeah, but I still want to put a hoop house over my brassicas, if possible. You just destroyed all of my vibe right there. I want my Brussels sprouts. Scarlet and Auntie's carrot. I love growing carrots. I love eating carrots. I cook a lot with carrots, but my deer always eat my carrots. So I gotta experiment with that some. Borage, um, a nice aromatic herb. I mostly got this one because of that one old 1500s manuscript style herb book talked about how borage is a 
antidepressant herb. Not that we need that, but I like studying some of the old herbal properties, and I might as well spray them too. For men, right? But it said, will help men feel joy, is what it said. And I was like, <laughs> what does that even mean? And then I looked it up, and borage is actually used as an antidepressant. Um, but I don't know if it's specifically men. It's just in the manuscript from the 1500s that it made men feel joy. So, anyway, Hempstead tomato. I've never grown these. Um, we are big on the dark purple-ish type tomatoes. So, I love black cherry, black creme are my two favorites. But I wanted to try the Hempstead tomato just to see what it's like. Black oil sunflower, again, for a food source. Blue Lake whole bean. We eat a lot of beans. It's one of our regular vegetables that we like to eat. Are you only giving me one at a time? Yeah. Sweet basil, large leaf. I'm curious if that's how different or in size that is from a regular basil, but it's sweet basil, so my favorite. Butterfly garden mix. Uh, we did some research ahead of time before we bought this one because we've been scorned by butterfly mixes before that are like Here's some, what was that one we bought for the front yard? The butterfly bush. It was, it was, no, 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 no. It was the hay bale. And you just spread the hay bale and it's supposed to grow. Oh, wildflower. It's a wildflower mix. It literally had. It was nothing but morning glories. Yeah. I was so disappointed. How was that it a mix? Yeah. With one plant. And then a lot of butterfly mixes will have like butterfly bush. Butterfly bush is not good for butterflies. It, they, they don't like butterfly bushes. And it's invasive, isn't it? And it's an invasive species, at least here yeah. in, in southeastern Pennsylvania, or south central Pennsylvania. But Mary's heirloom seed, this actually had some good um, plants in it. It had like echinacea, it had milkweed. This has legit butterfly good uh, supporting stuff in it. So I was happy with that. But she also gave us one for free, so we got two. Is this the last one? Nope. Japanese Minoways Daikon Radish. I think this is the big white ones. Never grown it before, just interested in trying it. And if, I mean, if it's a really long radish, it should help break up some of, and aerate yeah. some of the soil. I right? like radishes. Well, from butternut squash, I make a phenomenal butternut squash recipe. It's one of my favorite things that I make. So we're going to need a lot of butternut squash for that. And I might do a recipe video on it as well. Henderson Black Seeded Sampson. Simpson lettuce. I got Nathan on the brain, I guess. So more lettuce that we love. Corn flower, a very pretty blue flower for the garden to help track pollinators. Golden crooknut squash. I've actually never eaten it or grown crooknut, but Dad has. I uh -huh. think it's like an old... Uh, if you're from the South, well, let me rephrase that. Because uh, she's from the South. Thank um, you for that. You're welcome. Um, if you're from the South South, like... Texas South. Tex Texas, uh, Georgia, Alabama, South Carolina area. Louisiana. There's a lot of you get fried squash. Yeah. That's pretty much how you eat squash. Yeah. And that's the number one squash that they use. Yeah. To fry it. And it's really good. Yeah. Well, so crimson sweet watermelon. I love melons. My favorite thing to eat in the summertime when it's really hot out and you get a nice cool melon. My grandmother used to have a spring house on the old farm and she would just float them in the water in the spring house. And so when you would pick them up and eat them, it was just juicy and cold and uh summer bib lettuce another lettuce to try out cayenne pepper um i don't eat the pepper so much but we will dry it and i'll use the spice in a lot of my cooking french breakfast radish these are kind of those long purple radish that we just like to grow and cook for breakfast which is why it's called breakfast radish ford hook giant swiss chard another chard to try out i'm curious how tall that one will be the Royalty Purple Potted Bean. I like this one because it, it helped me accomplish one of my bucket list items, was it two years ago? Mm -hmm. Where I was able to create a rainbow of food that we cooked. And I will actually stick a picture of that right there. And because of that, I was able to cover the purple. I probably would put it over your face. Ebony acorn squash. Um, I love acorn squash. Donald tried it once and didn't like it, but I'm gonna make him try it again because it, it depends on the recipe. There was a butternut squash recipe that you didn't like that I did, and you love butternut squash, so no, let, let me try it in a different recipe. I love recipe. the way you make butternut squash. 
I don't love butter and squash. <coughs> I love the way you make it. I did not love the way you made. Well, then you could love squash. the way I make acorn squash if I tried it. Again, recipe. maybe I'll do acorn squash soup. I'm gonna try it. That's a good idea. Autumn Beauty Sunflower Mix. This has a lot of the red or dark color sunflowers. Add some color to the garden. Hale's Best Jumbo Melon. Another melon because summer is the time for melons. I have to redo that just in case that was caught. Oh no, it's fine. Provider Bush Bean. So again, another bean to grow, which we're excited about. So. Mr. Raccoon yep. again. So now that we. <laughs> So now that we're done looking at our seeds, I did want to mention because in the live on Thursday night, um, I talked about how Donald had won the Yellow Rose Homestead Tumbler. So you guys can kind of see how beautiful that is. Um, uh, Jennifer from Davis Family Farm actually made it, but um, they customized it for Donald. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Donald is a wastewater operator for a municipality. And one of the nicknames we call him is a turd herder. So on the back, they put a poop emoji and put turd herder on the back of it. I'm loved. So this is Donald's prize from them. Um, and while we're here, we are going to pick our winner for the contest or the giveaway for our 250 plus subs, which technically I think we're like 330 some now, but we are giving away, and let's throw all these seeds the backyard homestead guide to raising farm animals and then we are also giving away this cool vegetable journal that uh, would be good for the season to start recording what you're growing and we wrote down all the names of the people that entered and i mentioned in the live in order to enter you had to leave a comment on that live video from thursday after it was concluded and we are going to randomly pick one of these names and our number is number seven. Court. I don't think they can see it. There it is. I saw it briefly. Yeah. <laughs> number seven, which is Homestead Odyssey. So Homestead Odyssey actually just did her first live the other night for getting to, I think, 200 or 100 subscribers. Um, and she did a giveaway. So now we are going to do a giveaway and uh, send her... The backyard guide to farm animals and this cool vegetable journal for recording this year's vegetable garden so congratulations Hempstead odyssey i will send that out to you once i get your information feel free to either send us a message through facebook or i'll just send them uh, put a comment on your um one of your videos so that you know that you won anyway thank you thank you guys for watching and we will see you guys soon i'm crystal I'm Donald. Sorry, I'll get that. Why do you never remember that? I don't know. You're the talker. Well, you talked some. Eh. And work out for Kettle Farms. I'll get it better. He'll get better, I promise. So there's two books we use as a general reference right now. Um, they're not necessarily the best books for this but they're, they're pretty decent for a general idea is the vegetable gardening in the northeast since we're technically in the northeast and if I go to January let me get there and February so here's January for January it says for zone 6 and 7 to start celery leeks onions and thyme indoors are we doing time? Probably do some time too. We already have a lot planted, but we'll add more. And then for February, um, it says at the top here artichokes, which we don't grow, celery, leeks, mint, onions, oregano, and thyme. So we're going to do oregano too. I don't remember if we pulled that out, but we will be doing oregano. That's that book. This one I really like the format of it because you, you figure out your frost dates and then. Three weeks before last frost you, you frost, you write down what your day is. So if we go to February, our frost date's usually Mother's Day. Around that time is when we can put in the ground. So from the end of January to now, they suggest planting your celery, collards, cauliflower, broccoli, kohlrabi, cabbage, 
Um, and then of course some other tasks. And then in December, or January, the beginning of January, it said, you can start your parsley, thyme, broccoli, if you want to do sprouts indoors, um, leeks and onions for transplants, oregano, and basil if you wanted potted plants, which we don't do a lot of potted plants, although I may do some of oregano and basil at some point. But for right now, that kind of gives us a general idea of what we can plant now, and then we revisit this um, every other week or so to see if there's something else we need to look at. Mm -hmm.